Hey folks, it's Brian here, and I'm going to do a little experiment, and I'm going to try and get some work done on the Jeep. So, I'm using an Insta360 One RS. I don't think they could have made the name any more complicated. But, unlike my GoPro POS uh, Max, and that's a piece of shit in case you're wondering what POS stands for, um, that, that camera just sucked. That's the nicest thing I could say about it. Um, it was slow, it was clunky, the stitching was like, you know, is it ever going to finish? So anyway, I bought a Insta360 One RS. It's a twin edition, so it can do 360, and if I switch the lens module, it can also do um, 120 frames per second. So it lets me kind of explore some slow motion stuff that I've wanted to do. Um, so let's talk about the Jeep. You guys can kind of look around and see. I've got the camera in the middle of the engine bay. Engine's over there under a moving blanket to keep crap out of it. Uh, I found a Mexican body shop. I mean, the, the guy that runs the body shop and his son are from Mexico, so it is a Mexican body shop. And that was the right thing. I wanted a quick and dirty frame pole. Um, Stellantis Jeep says you can't use heat on um, the frame. They also say you can't section the frame, and I call bullshit. The reason I call bullshit is the internet is absolutely full of Jeep owners who have sectioned their frame when it rusted out because of design stupidity, because the engineers who designed it were trying to find a way to save a nickel, and never actually bothered to figure it out. Oh look, it's the cat that's not supposed to be in my garage, in my garage. Get out. I guess I woke that cat up. I'm gonna do more than wake that cat up if it doesn't stay the hell out of this garage. It likes to come in here and piss, and it's not my cat, like I said. The cat that does not belong in my garage. Bonus points if you guys can scan around and find it. Um, so anyway, um, I took the Jeep to them in May of 2022. I got it back in January 2023. You know what they say, you can have it good, fast, or cheap, and I chose cheap and good enough. Um, it was like seven or $800 all said and done to pull the frame and do a couple other little odds and ends that I didn't want to fuck with. That was a good price. Um... There are some things down here that I'm, you know, there's a little more space between this shock tower and this frame, and I need to put some corrosion protection on here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the center grill, because it's got to come out anyway to put the engine in. I'm going to pull these. They got this pretty damn straight, straight enough, and I'm going to pull this fender off. Um, I'm not real thrilled with the stunt that they pulled. They used self-tapping screws and then they cut them off and welded it. You know, I've just never seen that. I don't understand why you wouldn't use a spot welder, but whatever. Um, you know, the guy's been doing it for 30 years, so clearly he knows something I don't. It's good enough. This is going to be a toy Jeep for me, and there was no way in hell I was going to pay what people are paying for Jeeps. It just wasn't going to happen. So, um, you know, I'm into this thing for $6,000 probably. You know, it was a salvage Jeep. It's a 05 uh, Wrangler X um, Auto Tragic. Um, you know, I, I would rather it had not been an automatic, but it is what it is. Um, I think it'd be okay. Um, so anyway, that's what we're working on today. So I'm going to start doing some stuff here. I think half inch was the size. Yes, half inch is the size. Um, and uh, I apologize because the sound quality is probably about to go to hell if it isn't already there. There we go. Why 
this is so tight. I wonder if this is actually metric, because that would be a rational explanation for why this is so incredibly tight on here. Could just be a bad socket. There we go. What a pain in the ass. So it is a really good idea to mark all of your bolts. Uh, we're going to call these hood stay bolts. The odds of finding them again increase if you put them in a bag with their name on them. And we're going to find out just how true that is when I go to try and put this back together after a year that I took it apart. You know, it's, I mean, it's March. It'll be May before it goes back together. We're going to take off this one back here and... This should be the beauty of the 360 camera, is it should follow me around. shit up here that doesn't belong up here that is not related to the Jeep. Alright. So next I need to do some stuff in the front. So let me pull the camera up here. Um, they went ahead and put my bumper back on but I actually don't want the bumper on, so we're going to take that off right now. These are three-quarter. <laughs> yeah. And I think they're going to take more oomph, so I'm going to use the three-quarter inch instead of a small one. It is really time for a new one of these. And then this is a hot over here. So let's find a bag for these and we'll call these tow hook bolts. Really should have had um, lock washers under them, among other things. Okay, so, you know, this isn't bad. It really isn't. I mean, it, it's not perfect, but remember, this was pretty jacked the fuck up when I, when I towed it home. 
Um, it was totaled out by the insurance company, and I really do think they made the right call when they totaled it. But I don't think it was not repairable. I just think it didn't meet the threshold for economically repairable. And that was their decision. So the next thing that needs to happen is there's a bolt there that needs to come loose. It's not that size. So let me figure out what it is. <clears throat> Why am I stuck? There we go. So I think it is a five eighths. <laughs> And I'm right. I'll need to bring you guys with. And this is the beauty of the 360 camera. It's doing what I think it's supposed to. Can you hear me hop and puff? We're going to call that a front frame bolt. And I think it's, it's serviceable. So the next thing that needs to happen is put shit away. Which is right where the hell I set it, because yeah, I like to do that. Um, so this needs to come out, and in order for this to come out, I need to undo three bolts on each side. So let's get rigged up for that. Uh, I'm betting half inch. That's a safe bet. Let's find some extensions. So um, these are the front grill side bolts. And again, I'm gonna bring the camera over so you guys can see what I am doing. This is a giant experiment, so it'll be real interesting to see how this works. Not the tools, but the You know, I bet these are not half inch. I bet these are metric. They are just acting really weird. I'll bet they are 13 millimeter, just based on the way it's acting. So let's try 13 millimeter six sided socket. Uh, I would 
like to have not seen that move, but it is what it is. And what do you bet this side moves even more? Because there's some shenanigans over here. So, there are, looks like, two more back behind. Oh no, there's three, that's right. We need a different one of these. seems cross-threaded. That's irritating. So we got one cross-threaded, one missing. Not a huge surprise.
now just gotta find some place to set this. That looks like it's out of harm's way enough. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's okay. So now what we want to do is go after this. Oh, man. All sorts of shit loose that's not supposed to be. in here. Probably a 10 or 11. Maybe a 10. So now, we've got some bolts down here that need to come out. There's four of them. And then 
four more bolts on this side. So, let's start with these. So now we got to get inside here. All right, we're going to try and get in here and undo these bolts. Um, this is going to be something of a pain in the ass, as best I can see. So I want to break them loose before I take them out. All right, so I've got two more that I got to figure out how to get to. is the solution, although it's not pretty. Oh yeah, 
that, that's the solution right there is take this battery tray thing out. So, now that that's loose, I've got access down here. Oh yeah, it's a bunch of Home Depot um, pieces and a razor blade. Lovely. Alright, now where do I set everything? So, almost would have made more sense to just go get a whole new fucking fender, but hey, here we are. Now, the trick is to find someplace safe to set this. Yeah, table saw looks like a good place. can see exactly what the hell was done. Yeah. I mean, this is bent a little bit, but I don't see that it makes a hell of a hell of difference. The, the only real challenge here is I have no idea what the measurement's supposed to be. 
So I'm probably always going to have some tracking issues, but I think I can adjust those out with tracking bar. And, and the track bar needs to be replaced anyway. It's toast. Um, this was all bent to hell. They managed to straighten that out. Unfortunately, they didn't bend my brake line back in. Um, you know, this is probably not exactly the shape this is supposed to be in, and I'll bet the motor mount's close but not perfect. Sure doesn't look perfect. But I think this is going to be okay. I think it'll work. Um, you know, I, I think all things being equal, it's going to do the job. Um, I'm going to need to figure out how to get my brake line back in spot. I might. It's going to suck if I have to go buy a new brake line because this would be a pain in the ass to change one way or the other. I mean, no matter what you do, this is going to be a pain in the ass to change this brake line. What the fuck? Why did they run it on the firewall? What a dumb fucking design. All around this vulnerable part of the frame? Fucking stupid. Um, so anyway, um, what needs to happen now is I need to clean this thing out with some anti-corrosion. And I need to decide if I'm going to reinforce this or not. I don't think it needs it. I, I think it'll be just fine. Um, you know, this is supposed to be flat, but it just is what it is. I really don't think it's going to make a hell of a difference. I mean, and I know there'll be a lot of people that will argue with me online, but there's plenty of steel there, and... The bulk of the force is from here back. The, the front doesn't carry a whole lot, and I think all things being equal, they would make this thinner if they could. But they start with probably a piece of tube, square tube steel and just go to town bending gone wild. Um, and that was part of the reason I thought this would be okay, is um, I think, you know, if we're going to have problems, it's going to be in the shock tower area. And it might not hurt to re-weld some of this on. Um, you know, it certainly might not hurt over here. Got a little bit of... Get a flashlight so I can see better in here. Yeah, yeah let me get a flashlight, period, because I don't think there is one down here. Um, Oh, well, gosh. Old shop light will to work. Yeah. So, I've got some deformation on this front piece, and I think this, this could be welded back in a little better. So, I might take my welder to it. Um, since any welder sitting right there. But, this is pulled out a little bit, so I think that needs to be welded in better. Um, and otherwise, I think it's okay. I really do. If I want to replace this, uh, what the hell is this doing down here? It sure looks like it belongs there. I wonder what that broke off of. Um, Well, that's exactly what that broke off of. Yeah, so add that to the list of shit that I need to buy. No big deal. So, um, this sway bar is is probably not in the best of shape. Oh, yeah. So this is not supposed to be touching here. So this is definitely bent. And I think replacing the sway bar is probably the simplest thing um, to do rather than try to bend it back because it's it's hitting on the frame and it's really not supposed to yeah it's they didn't even tighten it over here um, so again this is pretty straightforward um, you know this is a crumple zone so the fact that this isn't really deformed tells me that I I have some issues here with the frame I mean clearly from here to here uh, is not in the best of shape. I mean, in an ideal world, maybe I would section it from here back to here. But this is a really complicated piece of geometry, so I'd probably go all the way back to the tub if I was going to section it. 
And I'd rather not do that. Um, I think this is functional the way it is, and I think if it gives me any grief, it can be reinforced. Um, it won't be pretty, but I think it would be reinforced. And, and I think at this point, maybe adding some stuff here, I don't see... Let me look at this side and see how it's attached. All right, so it's just welded to the base. Now let's see what we got going on here. Yeah. So apparently that's part of the fucked up ass suspension system on this. I don't know why there's a punch here. I guess that's damage from the crash. Um, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So there's this right here. Um, but again, I, I don't think that has anything to do with the price of tea in China. Um, this is structurally welded to the frame at the bottom. And then it looks like there's actually supposed to be a little bit of flex. And that would make sense. Because it would dampen some of the shock coming to the frame. And, and one of the things they were trying to accomplish is a little bit better ride with this independent coilover suspension. Uh, well, not independent, but a, this coilover suspension. Um, and I think, you know, this acts as a, a cup to support the shock and um, the, or the coil spring. So I, I think it's going to work. Um, it's certainly not pretty. It'll never be anything other than completely obvious that this thing has had framework done and it wasn't a very nice framework. But, you know, for a bargain Jeep that I can play with, yeah, it'll work. Uh, I trust it. I, I think this is more than sufficient. Um, the only real way to know would be to take it out and beat it up on the trail, and I'll eventually get some chances to do that. And I think everything else is going to be fine. So I want to weld this in just a little better because I'm something of a perfectionist in that regard. And um, I want to take the um, sway bar out before I do that so that I don't fry what's left of the rubber bushing in here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know if I want to do that right now. Well, I don't know why not. I got all the fucking tools out. So let's just keep going because, yeah. Where the hell did they go? Oh, they're on the floor. Arr! I have no idea. Well, oh, that's annoying. Why did they leave that loose? God damn it. That's shit that annoys me. That they left the brake line loose. Thank God I'm doing my own work. Ah, oh, there it is. think I would lose things if they weren't attached to my body. Where the fuck did I set that sharpie? Or where did it fall off to? 
Ah, there it is. Or there is one. So we'll just set this over here. Not sure where that came from. Perfect. And then I can just bend that out of the way. So that creates the access that we basically need, with the exception of this, is going to be a problem. I don't know how the hell that comes apart. Yeah, so essentially this got pushed over, probably by the engine. Hmm. All right, that's plausible. I'll buy that for a penny. So we got really good access in here. And what we need to do next is a little bit of welding, but that's not on today's agenda. Um, what's on today's agenda is what we've done so far, and I think... It's time to stop.